Sister Pat, Sister Candy, Pat, do you feel like singing? Or? Sister Amen. Thank God for my sisters. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I don't know how to work on a car, but I know how to mash the gas. And I don't know how to set these things, but my sister back there one time, she told me if you put three chords together, you could sing a song. And so I, ever since then, I've had a lot of fun. <laughs> I thank God for the power of prayer. You know, uh, when I came in, the enemy began to attack my body, but God is greater God is greater, and I've been touched, and I, I've, I've enjoyed the singing so much. <laughs> but y'all pray for me. This is just how I feel tonight. You were so high on your throne. I was below. I was so lost and alone, an unworthy soul. But you looked inside my heart, you saw what I could be. Then you left your home, stepped down from your throne. Someone like me How could someone like you Love someone like me Why would a king leave everything And die on a tree if I live a million years, I'd still never see how someone like you could love someone like me. You never needed me. But I needed you Cause I was a beggar Lord, my virtues so few Right here, this is, uh, I'm not here to entertain y'all I'm here to sing what's on my heart And I thank God, this line right here I almost can't sing it But I love it, I love it, I love it but then you adopted me into your family And now I'm an heir Such riches you've shared with someone like me How could someone like you Love someone like me Why would a king leave everything and die on a tree If I live a million years I'd still never see how someone like you could love someone like me. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. 
so good to be with you. Thank you for the invitation to come and fellowship with you. I'm sure you've heard some good preaching and good singing and the worship tonight's beautiful. As Sister Judy said, so good to see younger people up worshiping God. And, and how many felt something tonight? I wonder, I wonder why you felt something. I wonder why he allowed you to feel something. Did we deserve to feel something? No, we did not deserve. But he allowed us to feel his presence. He allowed us to taste of the divine. He, he allowed us to drink from the fountain of life. But why, why, why would he do that? Amen. He would do that to provoke in you a desire and a hunger. Hey, not for you to be satisfied with just feeling it. Not to be satisfied, amen, with, with just singing or speaking in tongues. Uh, oh, but to provoke uh, in you a desire and a craving uh, and a longing. Somebody say amen. Now, man's got a church, but God's got a church. Uh, man's got a church. Uh, they sing. They preach. Uh, man's church. Uh, they speak in tongues. Uh, man's church prays for the sick, uh, but God's got a church uh, that's built on the rock that the gates of hell cannot prevail again. God's got a church made up of born again, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, blood washed, sons of God, amen, baptized into the very spirit of that divine nature, walking with power and glory, casting devils out, opening blinded eyes, raising in the dead. Somebody say amen. We're talking about God's church. We're talking about the church that's on the rock. I'm in this church, this glorious church. I didn't join. I was born. Cause I'm in the church. I'm on the rock. Cause I'm on the rock. The gates of hell cannot prevail. Now there's a danger. There's a danger of you feeling it tonight. And if you don't feel it tomorrow night, you'll get discouraged. You felt his glorious presence tonight. But what will you do if you don't feel it tomorrow night. Amen. Where there is no vision. Vision. Where there's no revelation, you, you can't make it. You're going to get discouraged. You'll give up. You'll question God. Amen. So there must be a revelation. Amen. You must be, I heard Tom say, they, David danced. You know, when he danced, there was no music. But what was there? Revelation. He seen the ark. When he seen the ark, it was joy that welled up inside of him. Do you know about the cross? Amen. Oh, let me preach a little bit. Hallelujah. Let's look at a picture. I love pictures because I, I wasn't real smart, still not very smart. Amen. Let's look at a picture. We, we see God in His mercy and His divine plan for His people says, I'm, I'm going to bring you out of Egypt. Now the reason I'm going to bring you out of Egypt is Pharaoh thinks he's mighty, but I'm almighty. 
And the reason I'm going to bring you out is I'm going to take you in. Somebody say it's not enough to come out. There's a promise. So he said, I'm going to bring you out and I'm going to take you in. Now, I want you to see what I want, I plan to give you. Somebody say amen. So we're going to pick some men out here and we're going to let them go over here. I want them to see what I want to give you. Amen. So we pick out some men, one of each tribe, and we send them into the promise of God. And we wait on their report. We wait. We tarry while they go and, and we're wait, we're excited, you know. We're waiting uh, on that report, uh, and, and we know the story. Ten come back uh, and say it's impossible. There, there's just no way. Amen. Now, now remember, I brought you out to take you in. It's wonderful to be liberated, but the purpose of liberty, amen, is restoration. Amen. I want to take you to a place. I want to take you a place that's flowing with milk and honey. But we got two. Amen. Somebody thank God for two. We got Joshua and Caleb. They said, never seen nothing like it all my life. Mm -hmm. Takes two men to carry a cluster of grapes. Flowing with milk and honey. And that's why they call it the promised land. They, he said, we can do it. We can do it. We can. Why, why was he excited? Because he's seen it with his own eyes. He's seen it with his own eyes. He's seen those grapes. He's seen those houses. He's seen those wells with his own eyes. But those ten others were with him, but they didn't see it. They went to the same place, but they didn't see it. Now watch what happens. You felt what you felt because God wants to provoke a desire and a hunger in you to see where that came from. So we see Caleb. He has a good report. Whose report do you believe? Amen. So so we go to Joshua and let's let's try to uh, Thank you. This is my favorite sister. I got four of them. If that don't do it, we'll bring a couple more. The children of Judah came unto Joshua and Gilgal. Now, he's, God has allowed the children of Israel to just wander around in a circle because they didn't see it. And he allowed them to die. Yep. Amen. Now, now watch what happens here. They come to Gilgal. Forty years has passed. And Caleb, he said, he said unto, unto Joshua, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me in Kadesh Barnea. He said, uh, hey, hey. Now, now watch, 40 years have gone by, Daniel. 40 long years. And, and Caleb, he's watching people die. He's listening to people complain. What's keeping him? Amen. Going through dry places, climbing mountains. What's keeping Caleb when these other people are dying and complaining? His vision. His vision. He said, I know where we're going. Might take a while to get there, but I ain't giving up. I didn't feel it tonight, but I'll be back tomorrow night. And if I don't feel it tomorrow night, I'll be back 
the next night I got a promise I got a promise I'm standing on a promise I'm singing about the promise I'm speaking in tongues about the promise I've got a promise you can't dim my vision I've seen it myself I've seen where he died for my sin I've seen where he got up the third day I've seen where the veil was rent from the top to the bottom Well, there's no vision. Can we go a little farther? He said, uh, uh, um, Joshua, I remember what the promise was concerning me. I don't know what, I don't know what he told Daniel and Tom and uh, Brother uh, Pastor, but I know what he told me. I know what he told me. He said, come boldly to the throne of grace. He said, here's what he told me. The works that I do, you will do them too. And greater work, that's what he told me. He told me, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He told me, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. And he told me, you're more than a conqueror. He told me. You say, well, uh, so-and-so got prophecy for me. Well, that might fail. But this right here won't fail. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach to the poor, open some blind eyes, open some prison doors, Oh, I got to hurry here. Amen. So he said, now, it's been 40 years and I've watched people die and quit and give up. and I've watched them grumble and complain. But, but I know what I've seen. I've seen that promise myself. And I remember what he said. He told me, well, I'll just read it to you if that's all right. Amen. Moses swore. Praise God. He swore on that day. What did he say? Surely. Boy, in this place and economy living, we're living in now, there ain't nothing sure. Amen. But, but, but Caleb knew something that was sure. Surely the land where on thy feet have trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's. How, how long? Forever. Because thou hast wholly, W-H-O-L, followed the Lord. He said, don't you sit down and get discouraged. Don't you sit down and complain. Don't you ask why God. Don't you ask what's going on. You get up and start walking. He said, everywhere you put your foot, you can have it. And not only you, I'm going to give it to your children. I'm a warrior. I ain't no sissy. I didn't quit. I don't want to give up. I don't get discouraged. I have the spirit of faith. I'm a believer. You say, well, I'm a Methodist. I'm a church of God. I'm a Jesus name. I'm a believer. I believe in the blood. I believe in the word. I believe in the name. I believe in the promises. Well, You got to remind the devil of who you are. That's right. Let's go to the next verse, y'all. All right. He said, I remember what he said concerning me. And now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive. Whew. He didn't keep me dead. <laughs> y'all didn't hear that. He didn't keep me lifeless. He didn't keep me discouraged and oppressed. He kept me alive. <laughs> As a matter of fact, he said, John baptized with water. Uh, but, but I'm going to tell you about somebody else. He baptized you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Oh, I'm on fire. I'm consumed. I'm burning. I'm a light to the world. The oil of the Holy 
Ghost has filled me with the presence of his divine nature.
going somewhere. I hope God will lead me. David ran to meet the giant, didn't he? And Joshua blessed him. And gave Caleb Hebron for an inheritance. Now, these other brothers, they get land, you know. They get a little patch over here, a little patch over there. He said, I want the mountain. So he gave him Hebron. Hebron is the mount of association. It's the mount of union. It's where... Uh, whew, if, if I disappear, don't worry about me. Hallelujah. It's the place where kings are anointed. Kings. The king speaks a word of authority. It's the place where kings are crowned. It's the place where Abram got his ham and turned into Abraham. It's the place of the anointing. You feel it out here and it provokes you, inspires you, encourages you. Hallelujah. Puts a hunger and a desire in you for Hebron. Look here, David. David. David was blessed. Somebody say amen. And David took an army of rejects and outcasts and uh, debtors, amen. He made a mighty army out of them and he conquered his enemies. Now he's sitting on his, his throne. He got more money than he'll ever need. Somebody say amen. Got servants innumerable. Got the mightiest army in earth now. And he looks up to God and says, I ain't satisfied. He said, and I won't be satisfied until I'm like you. Somebody say, amen. Money won't help you. Amen. You think it will. Money won't help you. House won't help you. Car won't help you. But Jesus sure will. Amen. You be thankful. Don't you ever be satisfied. Huh? That's right. Amen. Y'all doing all right? We're almost to the other might lead me here. He gave him Hebron, that place of association, that place of oneness. What was the high priestly prayer in the 17th chapter of John? Father, make them one, one. I died for you so you could live for me. Somebody say amen. Oh, Father, make them one. Make them one. I shed the blood. I removed the barrier. I rent the veil. I give them an invitation. Come boldly to the throne. I want you at the throne. I want you at the throne. Don't stop out there. Don't quit out there. I want you in here where I am. I want you in Hebron. Revivals are killers, ain't they? <laughs> you don't get that. And Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb. Unto this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. Y'all ever court? Don't answer it. When I entered this courtship, you know what he told me? He said, uh, if you marry me, I own everything. Do you believe that? Now that's why I'm happy. What do you mean you're praying for a car payment? Huh? 
praying for rent. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb because he wholly followed. Now watch, we're getting to the good part here where, where I'm going to lose y'all here directly. And Caleb, and unto Caleb the son of Jephthah, he gave a part among the children of Judah to the commandment of the Lord to Joshua, even the city of Arba, the father of Anak, which city is in Hebron. He said, now what I'm giving you, I'm giving you this place where the giants live. <laughs> oh, God. Whew. What do you think? How many in here he gave you a lazy boy? How many give you a sword? Hey, we got three people got a sword back there. Now he said, I'm giving it to you, Joshua said, because God gave it to you, but I want to remind you now, Caleb, you're getting awful old. You're 85 years old now, Caleb. He said, God gave me the mountain, and I am going to take the mountain. He didn't say, I need some of you young men Get up here and fight with me, huh? Oh, glory to God. I got the man of war down in my belly. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm on the Now, this is a strange thing here. I wonder if I got somebody, uh, some people can help me here. Uh, now, we got Hebron up here. You, brother with the glasses on, would you help me? C come up here. Now, now this this is our destiny, our destination. Hold this up till you get tired with one hand, then use the other one. Amen. Th th this is our goal. I hope that's your goal. He that's joined to the Lord is... One spirit. Amen. Amen. When you're joined to him as he is, so are you. Amen. His spirit you have. His power you have. His anointing. His voice. His mind. His nature. His character. You only join to him. Out here you can feel it. But in there you become one with him. There's where you become the light of the world. Strange things here. It says uh, there were three sons of Anak. He had three sons. So give me three big guys here. Come on, Tom. Come on, brother. I don't know if any giants was bald headed or not, but we will use you. Come on, give me. Come on, Daniel. Would you help me, Aaron? Since the old man's dead, the new man's here, ain't he? I heard that song. Now, now, Caleb, God gave you Hebron. He that overcometh will I grant to sit down with me in my throne. What do you think all these guys are running for now? Come here, old man. New man, you wait right there. No, you don't have to kneel down. You're Caleb. You got power. You know what all these politicians are running for? A seat. A seat. Because with the seat comes authority, power. Woo. So we say, now, Caleb, I, I give you Hebron up her. I shed the blood, rent the veil. I give you an invitation. Come boldly to the throne of grace. One problem. You got three giants here. They are not going to let you in. Huh? Smile. You better get serious, boy. Now, 
Here are three giants in every man and woman's life. How many know what they are? Somebody said it. Let's look at this here. Here you go. You're not. This is where Jesus lives. His spirit lives in you to draw you into oneness with him. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. Three giants. What that says, Daniel? Bless the pledge. What's that say, my brother? Bless the vow. Foolish pride. The pastor ain't your problem. The singer ain't your problem. The brother ain't your problem. Now, God's gave you an invitation. He that's joined to the Lord is one spirit. In him, man was not created for woman. Woman was created for the man. So the bride of Christ was created for Christ. It's the bride of Christ. Amen. Now, old man, new man, young man, big man, you will only be complete when you are joined to the king. But there's three things you got to overcome, and pastor loves you, he can teach you, but he can't help you fight these giants. you got to fight them. See, I'm glad y'all sitting down. You might have to close your eyes here. The lust of the flesh is what got you in trouble. You can't pay your tithes now. <laughs> what, what got you in debt with your credit card? Hey, I ain't no entertainer either. Like my sister, I'm a preacher. Honor God with the fruit, first fruits of all your increase. <laughs> Lust of the flesh. Well, my neighbor got a new one. I belong to God. I can get me a new one. Yeah, you can probably drive it for a month or two and take it back. <laughs> you say, well, the Lord said he'd provide all my need. Sometimes we need to hitchhike. And depend on God. Hey, Amen. Oh, glory to God. I think I'll dance a little bit. You have to overcome that. That's the problem there. You want this and you want that. Hey, Amen. Hallelujah. And you get your burden down, you and your woman getting a fight over the money. Huh? Thank you, our sister. Say, amen. All right, Amen. What we don't realize, church, Hebron, Caleb had a revelation. He just wanted Hebron. He just wanted Jesus. He just wanted, he wanted that fellowship with him. Again, the lust of the eye is similar. You see things and you want them. Whether it's now it's men want men, women want women. Come on, brother. I hide behind him and preach this. He's pretty big. <laughs> See, wh why does God allow this? He wants you to have a vision that your only fulfillment will be in Hebron with the king. This won't satisfy you maybe temporarily. Come on, Daniel, give me an amen. amen. Then amen. you're miserable, ain't you, Daniel? Then you're miserable. I wish I'd have never bought that. Why did I buy that? Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Huh? Amen. These, these inordinate affections for things come out from among the and be having food and raiment therewith be content. Most people, it's got power of God's poor people. You know why? They have to depend on God for the food. Amen. And the pride of life. This is that old spirit that's not teachable when our, our, 
our pastor comes and teaches us, amen, the pride of life. We, we have that pride go before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. God, amen, recognizes and honors a broken and a contrite spirit. Somebody say amen. He said be clothed with humility. Life is for service. As he gets ready to leave, you have to contend with each one of these. These are the only thing. This blood is shed. The veil is rent. The invitation has been given. Come boldly to the throne of grace. But these three giants have to be dealt with. Every head bow. Thank you, brothers. You can sit down. Thank you for helping me. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Lord, we have a vision. We have a vision. We have a vision, Lord. Of, uh, uh, we have a vision of the promise, Lord. Hallelujah. The promise that you made us, Lord. This place of oneness with you, Lord. Uh, open our eyes, Lord. Open our understanding, Lord, that we may see, Lord, our only hope is in you, Lord. Our satisfaction, our peace, Lord, our rest only comes in you, Lord. Help us recognize these three giants in our life, Lord. Amen. Help us, Lord. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord, to contend with them, Lord. Fight the good fight of faith, Lord. You've armed us, Lord, with the sword of the Spirit, Lord, that we may contend with these giants, Lord, and move them out of the way so we can enter into the Holy of Holies and be one with you. Lord, we praise you for these folks that have come out tonight. They tasted tonight. All oh, the glory that overshadowed us tonight, Lord. Your very presence, your divine presence, Lord, creating us a desire and a hunger. Let us never be satisfied. Let us never be content, Lord. Lord, that we may enter in to that oneness with you. Give the Lord a hand. Give the Lord a hand. Give the Lord a hand. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Everything that hath breath, praise you the Lord. Sun, praise Him. Moon, praise Him. Stars, praise Him. Cattle, praise Him. Young men, old men, young maidens, praise Him. Wind, praise Him. Trees, praise Him. Everything that hath breath, praise you the Lord. He lives in praise. You want to talk to Him? Praise Him. You want to see Him? Praise Him. You want to hear Him? Him, praise Him. You need a miracle? Praise Him. You need a wonder? Praise Him. Come on, everything that hath breath, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, He's a rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. He destroyed principalities and powers, made a show of them openly. He took stripes for your healing. You don't have to leave here like you came in Jesus' name name. Somebody say amen. I want to pray for somebody. If you need prayer, run up here. Try not to hold you long. If you want prayer, run up here. If you don't, that's fine. Amen, anyone. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you. Hold your hands up. Amen. Hold your hands up. Hold your hands up like this. Hallelujah. Because He can feel them. Hold your hands out so He can feel them. Hallelujah. With your desire, Lord, make Him hungry. Make Him thirsty. Lord, give him a desire, give him a craving not to be satisfied with the normal, with the average, not to be satisfied. I want Jesus, I want Jesus, I want Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Go ahead, praise him. Somebody help him praise the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.